Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. I'm sitting here post Nam, I might say. Yeah. My friend Sanjay C. How are you? Great, great. Thanks for having me once again. Yeah. Well, you're more than welcome because you bring a, a smartness to the channel, which I appreciate. Thank you. You're always too kind. <laughs> Especially in the world of keyboards, I might add, because I'm a, I'm a, I always describe myself as a Beatles keyboard player, meaning I'm like, dun, 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 dun. that's me. You know, I'm kind of maybe the occasional simple arpeggio, but certainly not an accomplished keyboard player. And MIDI is my friend yes. and the ability to edit it. So I don't think, I think you pointed this out, we don't have enough keyboard conversations. I noticed that, yes, I noticed on your channel that, uh, especially in the realm of MIDI controller keyboards, yep. I didn't find that much, and I thought, hey, I do so much of that on my channel, right. why not uh, bring a little over to your studio? Marvelous. Well, we wanted to call this, or at least I was thinking of calling it, like, top three MIDI controllers. Okay, yeah, and maybe I'll do this. Um, I only brought three controllers with me. There's right. so many other MIDI controllers out there. I brought three with me that kind of are different in their feature set. And yeah. I thought that might be interesting because when you're playing keyboards and especially with a computer, there are three big things that you can do with a right. MIDI controller. So I'll kind of talk about that and I'll show you the differences with the three that I bought. Well, this one I'm quite familiar with. Yes, this is a super popular MIDI controller keyboard. Everybody's got this. I think it's the most popular MIDI controller keyboard out there. It's the Akai MPK Mini. Now, this is this is not in my top three even, but it's so popular I wanted to bring it because it does the basics really well. Okay. And the basics are, and I'll just show you, everybody expects they can play keys, definitely. I've got the grand piano loaded up in Ableton Live here. Play the keys. There you go. Easy. You can play drums on this too. I've got some drums loaded up on a track here. There is one thing that the Akai, uh, I think the, the one feature on the Akai that is much better than other keyboards out there. Okay. It is the drum pads. Okay. So if you're a beat maker, if you like to play drums live, if you prefer to, instead of programming them in your DAW to just play them on, 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 a, on a device like this, these have excellent drum pads. So if you're looking, if you really want great drum pads, okay. the Akai is a really great way to go. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, sometimes I look at these units with all of these, I presume these things are all assignable. Yes, yes. And while I, I'm probably more of a peripheral user of something like this. Yeah. So this is something that just seems like a lot of extra work for me. Okay, you know? it's so interesting. Because it's like, it can do all these 500 different things, but yes. I have to sit there and program it and all this stuff. I'm so used to like going, reaching over and doing something that's, you know, a knob adjustive. I mean, that's right. why consoles are so fantastic, at least for me. Now... How easy, I suppose, is it for somebody as dumb as me to take these things here and assign them to do jobs? That's an excellent question. So these days, with any of these keyboards, when you buy them, they usually come with scripts or configurations that work with the popular DAWs. So okay. even this one, if you use GarageBand, there's a setting here for GarageBand. So when you load uh, okay. up GarageBand and then you connect this keyboard, it assigns some things to these knobs already. Some typical... Some typical things. Right. And I'll tell you what... That I like. That makes yeah. sense. And one of the fun things is a mixer. You said you like just reaching for yeah. a fader or a knob. These can be assigned to your mixer. So instead of you, you know, fiddling with your mouse or a trackpad and trying to adjust your track levels, you can do it with, you know, the knobs here or faders on another. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if you prefer that feeling, this is actually great. And most of them just work out of the box. You just connect it. And, and I'll show you what it's doing in Ableton right Please. now. These knobs, so playing the piano here, I can adjust the brightness of the piano. On the screen, you'll see the brightness knob moving, okay. the tone, glue, reverb. So I can actually make the piano sound different by just staying here, being in the moment okay. here, rather than taking my okay. hands away and going to the computer. So this is kind of a nice way to find the sounds you're looking for, to adjust plug-in parameters okay. without reaching for your mouse. Okay, that I like. Yeah. See, that makes sense. What always terrifies me, and maybe I'm wrong to assume this because it seems like I am, that I'm coming with something with tons and tons of knobs and then I have to sit there and just, what am I, what am I going to assign this to? But if it's intuitive and it's already made some of those decisions for you. Yes, and that's what tons of these keyboard man manufacturers now try to do. And I want to now move to the next one because that one does it really, really well. Okay, great. Oh, this is the Artorio Mini Lab 3. Now, it does everything that I described on the Akai, but it gives you something 
extra. Arturia, as you probably know, makes these great software plug-in, Absolutely. especially of these vintage synths. Yeah. And that's where these knobs and faders get really cool. Because now, I've connected this to Ableton, and I've loaded Arturia's Analog Lab V. And what this has is all their nice plugins and their presets. I can load a preset, and right now I've loaded it. This is the Roland, uh, their Roland Juno emulation. You can play, play the sounds. Now the knobs are automatically assigned to do different things. The first knob here adds distortion or phaser. Nice. Add some delay, some reverb. So now, while I'm tinkering with the synth sounds, I'm actually adjusting this virtual synth here. You can actually see the faders going up and down on the synth, right? Yeah. It's such a nice way to experiment yeah. with sounds, to sound design, without, again, going to your mouse and... Okay, so it's an Arturia plugin yes. with an Arturia keyboard. Yes. Okay. Now, there are other manufacturers that do this, too. How much is this? This is, if I remember correctly, $129. $129. You may have sold me on this. Yeah, this is great. This, this makes sense to me. So you've got pads. I mean, I, they've been, it's very intuitive, so they have the same amount of controls down the bottom, the same amount of faders that are up there. Right. I get that. So... There's two companies that do this really well. They're mm -hmm. controlling of their own virtual instruments. Arturia is one. Yeah. Native Instruments is the other. Yeah. So you know Native Instruments has their own virtual instruments. Now, if you get a Native Instruments keyboard, they have their own software called Complete Control. You load that up with the Native Instruments keyboard, you're doing pretty much the same thing. It gives you instant access to their instruments and yeah. synths. Just, again, a nice tactile feel to controlling their virtual instruments. I love it. Yeah. I love the size of this as well. And I want to show you this mixer control as well. So now, with this knob, I'm now controlling the mixer. I can control the sends. You'll see that you know, turning on the screen as I'm moving these faders. Once again, it's another way to be listening there to your mix and not reaching for the mouse. Dumb question is then, how does it know when to switch to something else? Because you went into record, so now that's the function? Yeah, so if I'm, if I'm now changing my track to something else, it'll control something else here. Different keyboards, mm -hmm. they, they do things a little differently. You know, right. one keyboard, by default, is going to say all the faders are controlling the first four tracks of your mixer, okay. right? Um, another keyboard like this one is saying, well, we're going to give you different functions on just the first track of the mixer. So it's, it's giving you your pan, your sends, and the track volume here. So yeah. different companies do it a little differently, mm -hmm. but so it's kind of good to, for you to kind of look, research what the keyboard does before you buy it. Make sure it's meeting what your expectations of what you really want to do in your workflow. There, this is... Yes. Oh, wow. It's like a solo. You're already getting the hang of it. Wow, so this is So with this, yeah, you've got you've got the ability to do So wow, instant Jeff Beck. Yep. <laughs> nice. So um That's really cool. Yes. This is a lot of fun. This is an MPE keyboard controller. So this is this one is by Roly. Now other companies are making these too now. So you got uh, Roger Lin, you've got Jouet Play, you've got Osmos by Expressive E. That was a big hit at uh, NAM recently. Yeah. Uh, they're all letting you do more than just pressing in piano keys. You can do things like pitch bending. You can do things like sliding this forward, getting a different tone from it. So these keyboards are now there to add more expression. You know, I just want to... Yeah. Isn't that fun? Once you get the hang of that, so try the... Try the... Warren's giving up his guitars now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I brought this because it's special. It's different. Yeah, and it's amazing. It, there's so many companies now getting into MPE-style MIDI controllers. Because what does MPE stand for? MIDI Polyphonic Expression. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's taking the basic MIDI messages, adding a lot more information to it, right. and now more DAWs are compatible with it too. So DAWs and now these controllers are now working really well together, and you can just do more, be more expressive with the way you play. So yeah, some of the MIDI, the MPE controllers are typically a little bit more expensive, but and they don't have the knobs. You're not going to be able to control your DAW with it, but yeah. it just gives you a little something extra. And it's fun, right? Yeah, how much is, uh, are these? So these, um, don't quote me on this, but I think right now really selling them in a Songmaker kit for $400, if I'm not mistaken. What comes in the kit? I think you get, you, so you get all their software, you, because it comes okay. with special software that's compatible with MPE that MIDI controllers. Yeah. Um, and you get this keyboard, and I think you get a few other little controller things that help you navigate their software a little bit better, too. And maybe even control your DAW, because this has nothing to control your DAW with. So, Jay, this has been a blast. Yeah, and likewise. There will be links, obviously, for the products, so you can go and check them out. And, of course, most importantly, go and check out Sanjay's channel down below. Absolutely. I have tons of more information on my channel on MIDI controllers. So please You're the man. Check, out, check out this stuff. Thank you for having me, Juan. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. So long. Farewell. Have you au revoir. Adios. Ciao. Two zines. Tschüss. Goodbye. Bye.